What's up, sports fans? It's your man be back speaking my sports talk. All right, check it out, man. Basketball, I'm bringing basketball back. I got to get back on my stuff, man. You know what I mean? Uh, been slacking up a little during the COVID-19 situation. But as y'all know, it's speaking my sports talk here. We do basketball. We do boxing. We do MMA. And I got to get back on my shit and get back to my MMA and my basketball. So we talking Zion Williamson today. For the love of sports, let's talk about it. So check it out, man. So, Zion Williamson has run into some issues. Uh, and so, here it is in a nutshell. Gina Ford, which is the president of um, Prime, what was the name of that company? Um, don't get me. Uh, Prime Sports, right. And create, okay, she's the president of Prime Sports, but she was also Zion Williamson's marketing agent. And Zion Williamson allegedly signed a five-year deal with Gina for, you know, uh, through Prime Sports, the company that she's the president of. Well, this was before he came to fame and, you know, got to Duke and all of that. Well, what's going on now is that Creative Artist Agency, which is a bigger sports agency presumably they've been given and allegedly this is what Miss Ford is saying they've been paying Zion Williamson money benefits giving his family things along the way while he was under contract with them and now that Zion Williamson is the big Zion Williamson where he is he basically try to push forward and those guys to the side you know, as if this would go away, and now now they're suing them, basically. And they're saying that creative uh, artist agency was they were leading him the whole time because they were giving them favors, they were giving them promises, telling them, you know, you guys know the game. Um, uh, allegedly, it was told that they were even giving favors to his parents as well, his stepdad and his mom, you know quirky jobs just you know bullshit jobs but paying them handsome salaries for it, jobs with the company and you know providing houses and paying bills and you know under the table cash and so forth and so the whole scandal what's going on now is that since Zion Williamson is trying to I guess I don't know if he has or tried to pull out from Gina Ford and their agreement He's being sued. He's being sued and CAA, Creative Artist Agency. They're being sued as well for tampering with the contract. Like basically, Zion Williamson is in breach of contract with Prime Sports. And they're suing for $100 million in punitive damages. Now, here's the kicker. This lady, Gina Ford, is getting nasty with it because... She is exposing things on the level that's going to affect Nike, huge, and the NCAA. And this is where things get big. So what she is demanding of Zion Williamson is uh, that he admits that he, he himself and his parents were taking favors from CAA, the NCAA, and Nike. And she wants him to come out and confess that because this would support her case uh, in the $100 million lawsuit for punitive damages. Now, I think this lady has absolutely lost her damn mind because Zion Williams' PR team, his lawyer team, whatever, he's not going to come out and we can cancel that already. He's not going to come out and admit all of that. You know, things against Knight, Duke, and uh, Creative, like she's gone crazy. But, uh, Obviously, they have some type of evidence or what they would consider proof, and they're gonna try to put pressure on him. And then, uh, of course, um, you know he can be they can he could be dispositioned to come to court, which I don't think that they've taken those moves yet. So it could cause him a court case where he's in and out of court and such and all of this. So I think um, 
but they're putting heat on him now to confess, which I doubt that that's going to be done. Uh, because again, it's going to shine a terrible light on the Duke organization, uh, which NCAA, NCAA is a billion dollar organization. Nike, billion dollar organization. So, uh, you know, Prime Sports, I'm pretty sure is a, a known agency sport. I don't really know a lot about these sports agencies, but lady, you're going against the NCAA, Nike, and what to be is the you know next superstar of the NBA, which is another organization, Zion Williamson. And, you know, this is an uphill battle for her, but obviously I believe she has some proof. But here's something we have to think about, guys. And, you know, this whole situation with Zion Williamson, because this is not the first time that we've come across these types of things with the NCAA and these kids in college, you know, uh, the pay that they're talking about heavily now, paying these college students. Here's the thing. And I just wanted to give my perspective on this whole thing the Zion Williamson case is going to end up how it is I just wanted to kind of share with you guys what was going on with that but when it comes to a lot of these athletes and the fact that you know a lot of them come from low level uh low income you know a low income lifestyle uh and then you think about the fact that these kids get um scholarships to college and you know they get chosen to certain high schools the game starts and when i say the game i mean the recruitment game the scouting game the game starts at the high school level guys it doesn't start and it's been this way for a while you know recreational high school level this is where these scouts these sports agents these teams this is where the that game starts at and these kids are basically investments, dollar signs to these guys, okay? And along the way from high school, all the way to the pros, these kids basically get nothing. People are making money off their names. They're making money off their likenesses. They're making money off of their potential. All of these companies, these agents, these, they're making money off of these kids and these kids and their families are getting nothing. Not a dime for it. But it's them that these other place, these other companies are making money off of. And then they get a free ride, as they call it, a free ride to college. Well, let's talk about this so-called free ride to college from this kid that's coming out of poverty. OK, well, we pay for your education. That to me concerning the NCAA a for all of these kids on scholarship is complete bullshit. We're providing you an education. Now, there is a fine line between producing a prima donna where these kids feel entitled and they then treating them as, say, a, an indentured servant, basically. And just simply paying their scholarship to me is not enough. Do I feel I honestly don't feel that these kids should start getting paid at the collegiate level? Because that will produce even more, in my opinion, of this prima donna syndrome where these kids feel entitled and they go into the leagues and, you know, well, I'm not going to play this. I'm not stepping foot on the court until it kills a lot of the thirst and hunger to achieve when they hit the professional level. So there's a fine line between that. But what I do feel that these collegiate organizations these uh, and, and NCAA should do is a lot more than just pay a damn tuition because there are a lot of stories of these uh athletes student athletes that are literally struggling to play their sport continue in school and basically survive listen if they have training and listen these guys are top notch uh athletes guys so they're not getting drafted to these schools because they're mediocre. They're top-notch athletes. This is why the schools are paying for their whole college tuition. So there's dedication. There is a level of dedication, training, practice required. These kids spend a lot of time doing that. They also have to maintain a certain GPA. So they have to be involved in their studies. Let's not even talk about their leisure time. But then the, the other factor is they have to survive. They have to eat. They have to have clothing and 
things like that. The NCAA should pay for all of that. These kids, the whole four years they're there, in my opinion, they should not have to pay for food. They shouldn't have to pay for housing. They shouldn't, they should actually get a clothing allowance, an allowance for like hygiene products, because the NCAA and these colleges are making millions. They get millions of dollars for making it to a bowl game. They get millions of dollars for airtime. They're making millions of dollars. And these, you know, forty, sixty thousand dollar tuitions, a mere pittance of what these kids are, are bringing in. So these kids should not have to, if they have to be concerned with their studies, if they have to be concerned with the dedication and desire that it takes to that sport, the practice, the tumultuous practices that they go through, if they have to be concerned with that, they should not have to be concerned with a fucking part-time job or something like that having to work because they are 100% responsible for producing millions of dollars of income and instead of these teams in the NCAA putting this money back in to underhanded uh, larceny and underhanded foolery criminal activities they should be putting it back into these student athletes now back to that fine line I was talking about where you don't want to create this prima donna syndrome all of them should be if you're under a scholarship, I think that all of them should be awarded the same thing. That would keep the separation because you have these star players and, you know, teams and they want to give the star players more. No, you shouldn't do that. If they're a student athlete, if they're under scholarship, then they should have room and board. They should get like a free food card or whatever for the cafeteria, all of that type of stuff. And everyone should get the same thing, the same amount for clothing allowance and so forth. And you keep it even around the board. That creates a team environment, a team atmosphere. But things should be made a little easier for those kids because your average academic student that comes in there on an academic scholarship, they're not bringing millions of dollars in. So I think it's justified for these student athletes that's bringing millions of dollars into these uh, uh, universities. I think it's justified that their room and board be paid for. I think it's justified that their food costs be paid for, that their hygiene and, and personal products costs and clothing costs they get an allowance for. I think that they should be, you know, provided with certain amenities while they're there earning the college millions of dollars. But should they be paid a salary or contracted? No, I, I think that that would be taking it. You would be basically turning the collegiate level into a pro sport. They would become pros at the collegiate level and you have to stay away from that because you don't want to create that prima donna syndrome that's already there bro it already exists because of the underhanded things that's going on a lot of these stars here's the reality of it zion williamson probably took money so did lebron james so did kobe bryant so did a lot of these guys that the cameras and the eyes was on them before they hit the collegiate level and the pros yeah they took money but again, they're coming from poverty, guys. So it's safe to say that a lot of these guys took the money. But what's being offered to them so that they can focus on the game and the sport instead of focusing on survival? Because they're from poverty and they have to focus on survival, then any of these little underhanded crooks from whatever sports agency or shoe company or scouting uh, agency comes to them with ten, five, fifteen thousand dollars, and they're living in poverty. They're going to take it. They're going to take it. Their families are in dire straits, right, at, at the time. So you know, it's a fine line. Um, it, it is a fine line, but we have to understand as the sports fans that the the vultures come in at the high school level, guys. The vultures come in at the high school level. It's not way before they get to college. 
even at the recreation level, it may sound ridiculous, but at the recreation level, before they get to junior varsity, before they get to varsity, vultures are there at the recreation level looking at these young talents. And so we have to sympathize and somewhat for the guys who have been in the position to be a student athlete can also empathize with what's going on out there before we cast judgment and say that it should be this way or before we just say oh it's messed up they should get paid there's a fine line and there's a lot to think about about just paying these guys but i do think that these collegiate athletes should uh their lives during their college run should be made a lot easier and there's plenty of funds to do it um I have heard the worst stories of some of these guys that play football, that play basketball, that play baseball. It's ridiculous what they have to go through, what they don't have. These are athletes. They need to eat, guys. Some of these guys are not eating right because they don't have the money for it. All of them are not Johnny Menzel's. They don't have rich parents and got it made while they're playing football. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, come on, guys. So... You know, I just wanted to put this out there about the whole Zion Williamson situation. Uh, he is being sued. Uh, and CAA, they're being sued as well for tampering and, and influencing basically Zion to go in a different direction. Basically influencing Zion to go with Nike, to go with Duke and... You know, it was conflict. It was a breach of contract and she's suing for $100 million. You know, uh, Zion Williamson and, and CAA. And, uh, you know, there was some wrongdoing, I'm sure. But, you know, it's just like, it's just like they say in the streets, keep your mouth shut. If they're pushing so hard for him to give an admission, <laughs> maybe there's a, a lack of evidence. That's what we have to think about. But I wanted to put that out there about the NCAA and these kids coming out of poverty. I think more should be done for them so it would give these vultures less of a chance to influence them to do wrong. So, you know, that's what I wanted to say about that. We back with basketball. And y'all know how I always in this thing. For the love of sports, let's talk about it. Peace.